Hey, Larry Kirkpatrick here for Horizon Watch. November 7, 2023 saw the signing of Global Faith Leaders Summit Interfaith Statement for COP28. The National Catholic Reporter writes, quote, Casting this as a pivotal moment of the global climate crisis, leaders of the world's major religions have called on governments and the business world to use the upcoming United Nations Climate Summit to usher in a just and rapid transition from fossil fuels to clean energy sources and for nations to establish accountability mechanisms to hold them to their climate action pledges." Unquote. Now, of special interest to those with an eye to prophetic developments, the NCR article singles out the three groups mentioned in Revelation 18, you know, religion, governments, and business. That is, you know, Babylon, the kings of the earth, and the merchants of the earth, working in combination. Now, the COP28 meeting is going to continue from November 30 through December 12, 2023. Pope Francis has written pastoral letters affirming this climate emergency, like Laudato Si and Laudato Deum, and is scheduled to address the meeting. Now, some groups involved in this statement that was issued are kind of interesting. The Muslim Council of Elders, for example, you know, we might think of that as representing Muslims globally. But in fact, Islam really has no substantial global organizational structure. And the Muslim Council of Elders was only formed in 2014. If you take a look at their website, at least right this moment, the website currently includes a slide featuring, who, who do you think it would be? Pope Francis is on their slide. That's pretty interesting. Now, another prominent group involved in the creation of this statement is the Baha'i. Now, one of their central principles of the Baha'i uh, faith is this, quote, today the human race is passing through a period of turbulent adolescence, moving towards the next stage in its life, a stage of maturity characterized by the emergence of a united global civilization. Our well-being, our peace, and security are all dependent upon the firm establishment of unity, unquote. Now, perhaps there you see the very uh, the liberal approach, you know, that humans are just getting better. We're good. We're just getting better and better. Uh, but that's not what the Bible teaches. Now, the Baha'i have combined their group called the International Environmental Forum with the United Nations to produce the actual statement. And it's even hosted when you look around, you find out it's actually hosted on a UN web platform. Now, the statement includes a number of kind of interesting lines. Let's just sample a couple of them here. Quote, we advocate for human rights in a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment, a declaration adopted by the General Assembly in 2022. This recognizes the intrinsic rights of ecosystems encompassing water, oceans, and seas to exist, thrive, and rejuvenate. Ha. Unquote. Now, ecosystems do not have rights. Although this doesn't mean we should just destroy them, but yeah, they don't have rights. Okay, how about another statement? Quote, we acknowledge faith compliant finance for sustainable development, harnessing resources for the well-being of all sentient beings today and in the future, unquote. Well, now, faith compliant finance means, you know, using the financial influence of religious organizations in a cartel-like manner, doesn't it? Hmm. Here's another statement. A couple of them here. We urge governments, especially those endowed with greater resources, to lead in curbing emissions and supporting climate mitigation and adaptation efforts in less privileged nations. And here's another one. We implore governments to commit to the operationalization of new financial mechanisms that address loss and damage, especially in the most vulnerable regions, and ensure that this fund is interdisciplinary, effective, and inclusive, and directly reaches the most vulnerable of the affected communities." Unquote. Now, lines like this are advocating, did, did, did you see it? They're advocating really a substantial transfer of wealth from one group of nations to another group. Hmm. Here's another statement. We beseech financial institutions, IFIs, private sector companies, and governments to adopt responsible investments and business practices aligned with climate, environmental, and social standards, unquote. Now, this language masks the use of ESG rules. You've heard of that, haven't you, lately? ESG, environmental, social, and governance rules. In other words, basically party guidelines, like if this was the Soviet Union, party guidelines for who will and who will not be granted uh, financial opportunities, financial services. Yeah, hmm, interesting. Friends, you know what? A vast change in human civilization is being implemented through the rise of 
non-democratic governance structures, unprecedented population migrations, sweeping changes in values and morality, and the application of technology to propagandize, shape opinion, and censor unwanted viewpoints. That's what's happening. And yet many prominent religious leaders are on board the one world governance train. As the National Catholic Reporter wrote, quote, signatories to the latest statement include representatives of the world's major religions, Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Judaism, Islam, as well as Baha'is, Sheikhs, Mahikaris, and Mandians. Such trends, friends, are foretold in Scripture. We are not yet at the climax of Revelation 18, but we're close enough now to those events that elements that... Uh, build up to that are entering into our focus. So let us seek God while he may be found. Hey, if you're finding these kind of presentations useful, these short prophetic insight presentations, sign up for the newsletter over here, right? Just go over there and click in there and find that URL. Sign up to that. It's also in the notes at the bottom here. Uh, we're going to come out with the newsletter here at least about once a month or so and we'll have new videos and new presentations keeping us up to date on these these things that are happening all around our ears it's pretty late in the hour i really think we're living at one of the most extraordinary times hey let's be let's be alert and know what's going on and let's go back to the bible where we'll always find god's truth and his solutions and he will get us all through quite safely god bless you